Now let's walk through the code in this LabVIEW project. We'll begin by reviewing the overall structure, in particular starting with FPGA main VI. Main purpose of this VI is to read audio samples, send them up to the PC, read processed audio samples, and then play those out. The sampling rate is controlled by the loop time control. The loop itself is a perpetual loop. It never, never stops. We have no provision for stopping it. We pick up the audio inputs left and right channel, bundle those together into a single U32 integer, and then send that up to the PC. Zero timeout means that this VI does not block in case the PC is not reading its end of the FIFO. However, this does show up as an overflow indicator. Here we pick up the processed audio from the PC element by element. The zero timeout again means that we do not wait for the PC to fill its end of the FIFO. The values are split up into left and right channels and then piped out to the audio output. The loop time control and the two indicators are intended for programmatic control by the PC VI. A quick side note, please replace all of the RT references with PC. This was a copy-paste typo, and it's since been fixed in the code that you are running yourself. Let's move on to PC main. This VI reads the audio samples from the FPGA VI running on the FPGA target and processes them. You can select the FPGA VI by finding it in the hierarchy and make sure this option is checked so that the VI runs when it's downloaded to the FPGA. I'm configuring the size of the FIFO in terms of the number of samples that are requested using the same value for each 1024. Begin by taking the desired audio sampling rate in kilosamples per second converting that to microseconds and then writing that to the front panel control of the FPGA. The read write control also reads the overflow indicators. The audio frame size is used as the number of values to read from the FPGA. And that is available as an array. So I'm using split to divide that into the left and right channels. The very simple processing in this demo applies a, an adjustable gain factor. And you can replace this with your own audio filter or effect. The left and right audio frames are recombined into a single element and sent back down to the FPGA, and then also visualized on the front panel as a graph. The loop performance is measured. We can see the actual measured loop time in milliseconds. And then you can use the wait function to artificially increase the loop time for experimentation purposes. Either an error or the stop button causes the loop to exit. And then we finish by closing the reference to the FPGA VI. And with this option, it also stops the VI from running. Now let's create and configure some DMA FIFOs. Go under the FPGA target, select New, and then FIFO. This brings up the configuration dialog. I recommend choosing meaningful names for the FIFOs, especially something that indicates the direction, such as to or from. Choose either of these DMA options, and once selected, you choose the number of elements. You can choose the data type, and then you can choose the number of elements per read or write. I'll show you how these are specifically configured in this project. I have 511 elements requested. And it's very easy to get these on the block diagram. Sim simply drag and drop them onto the block diagram. Now let's go back to the PC side of the DMA FIFO.
back here where we configured the number of elements to read. I'm using the invoke node for this purpose. And once you connect the FPGA VI reference, then various options become evident. In particular, these two for the DMA FIFO that we've created in the project, these must already exist. And once they do, you select the particular one and then you choose what you'd like to do with it, in this case, configuring it. Let's wrap up by locating the various functions in their subpalettes. Looking under FPGA interface, and I'm on the PC VI right now. Here we have open FPGA VI reference. Here we have the read write control. And here we have the close FPGA VI reference. Back on the FPGA VI, let's look for the join and split number functions. Look under the numeric palette, data manipulation, and here we see split number and join numbers. Finally, I'd like to point out for the FPGA IO, IO nodes, look under audio and you see all four types, left and right channels, audio in and out.